Hi, my name is Pau Vila and I'm the technical manager and scientist of GrowGreen. Welcome to another new video about the capabilities of our products. In this presentation, I will let you talk about the beneficial effects when using GrowGreen products in wheat and barley. Specifically, I will let you focus in the grain protein increase, but also how can we contribute to have a consistent protein concentration around the paddock. I hope you find it interesting. Let me start this presentation with a brief introduction to the composition of cereal grains. Wheat grain mainly consists of 70% starch, 14% of water, 8 to 12% proteins, and other small constituents. Wheat proteins are classified into four types. This is albumins, globulins, prolamins, and glutarins. But also, green proteins can be classified according to its function into a structural or metabolic, which is the non-gluten proteins, and storage or gluten proteins. The gluten storage protein constitute 80 to 85% of the total wheat grain. The other 15 to 20% of metabolic proteins are responsible for enzymatic activity and starch breakdown. On the other hand, barley grain contains about 65% starch between 10 to 15% of water and from 9 to 13% percent proteins with other small constituents. Similarly to wheat, proteins in barley are divided into the same four groups, albumins, globulins, prolamins, and glutarins. The content of non-storage proteins, albumins and globulins, is 11 and 15 percent respectively higher than in wheat grains. The non-starchy polysaccharides are about 10% higher as well. In agriculture, the most important parameters to consider in wheat and barley are grain yield and grain protein concentration. There is a negative interaction between grain yield and protein content. The higher the grain yield is, is often associated with lower protein content. This is mainly due to the fact that grain yield depends on the carbohydrate deposition while the protein content depends on the nitrogen content. Low grain protein content with high grain yield is undesirable. Grain protein content can increase by greater mobilization of nitrogen from vegetative parts including roots or leaves. Other than natural absorption of nitrogen through the roots or the plant microbes exchange, nitrogen levels in the plant can increase by means of fertilization. This figure shows the negative trend between the grain protein content and the grain yield for a variety of wheat genotypes. As we can see, the genotypes with high yield correspond with the low protein content and vice versa. For instance, let's look at the genotype diamond. The grain yield is very low, but the protein content is the highest of the studied genotypes. The opposite pattern can be seen in the genotype lavette, which has high yield but very low protein content. So, what are the factors that affect grain protein content in wheat and barley? Genetic background accounts for 95% of the grain protein content, leaving only about 5% to environmental factors. Genetic factors, such as the origin of the cultivar, the genotype, or the different variety, have a direct effect in the grain protein content. 
The effect of the genetics in the protein content is currently one of the most important leading targets. The goal is to increase grain yield without adversely affecting the protein content. This can be achieved by selecting genotypes from old and new germplasm. As I said before, environmental factors account only for 5% of the protein content in the grain. Some of these factors can be affected by humans, and these include the type, quantity, or timing of applying the fertilizers, soil properties, precipitation or irrigation, atmospheric temperature, etc. Wheat and barley react similarly to genetic and environmental factors as well as their interactions. And that's why, in both cereals, it is quite difficult to keep a steady concentration of protein in the grain. Let's discuss a little bit further about the environmental factors, as these are the ones that can be affected by human beings. By the means of fertilization, we can influence the protein content, especially with nitrogen-based fertilizers. It has been shown that late nitrogen application increased protein content in both wheat and barley. When fertilizers are applied late in the growth cycle of the cereals, nitrogen is transported to the grain with no time to be relocated or used in any other metabolic process within the plant. And that's why it directly influences the nitrogen concentration in the grain. The type of fertilizer used can also affect the content of proteins. Hormone-based fertilizers, especially the ones containing giberellic acid and abscisic acid, can trigger the synthesis of proteins. Amino acid fertilizers can also influence both an increase of grain yield and protein content. They can also interact with the formation of auxins and giberellics, which can increase the protein content in the grain. The properties of the soil can also affect yield and protein formation. This is mainly associated with the content of nitrogen in the soil and the microbial population in the surrounding of the roots. This affects the nitrogen uptake in the plant through a faster or a slower mineralization rate of the organic matter. The temperature that the cereals are exposed to during the growth cycle is also a determinant factor. An increase in temperature before flowering shortens the plant maturation time and thus leads to less assimilation of carbohydrates in the plant. Lower accumulation of assimilates thereafter leads to a lower starch accumulation in the grain and thus to higher grain protein content. Now, let's summarize all of the very four ideas together. If we intend to increase the grain protein content in wheat and barley, we will 1. Select a genotype that shows high protein content. 2. With a short time to anthesis. Again, this is because lower assimilates will enhance the protein content. 3. Select a soil with not too much nitrogen availability, especially early in the season. And 4. Using a fertilizer with a low nitrogen content earlier in the season. With all these parameters, how can Grow Green products help? Grow Green's amino gel will keep a consistent protein concentration in the cereal grains due to its hormonal content. Hormones in amino gel are sourced from two different seaweed species. Our species come from completely different environmental conditions. 
and as a consequence, the hormonal profile of one species is complementary with the other. The result is a product that contains the five most important hormones in plants. As we can see in the graph, amino kelp contains abscisic acid, giberellins, auxins, cytokinins, and ethylene. As I said before, the protein synthesis is modulated by the concentration of giberellic acid and abscisic acid. Giberellic acid enhances the level for amylase formation. This is an enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of starch into sugars in the aleuron layer. Abscisic acid blocks the stimulation of amylase transcription. This is due to the antagonistic effect between abscisic acid and giberellic acid. As the plant hormones cross stack to each other, which means the effect of each hormone individually is antagonistic or synergistic with the others, it is important to have a product that incorporates all of the plant hormones. It is not the individual effect of a specific hormone, but the combination of all of them that modulates the appropriate response in the plant. But also, how can amino kelp help wheat and barley farmers to have higher yield? Amino kelp will increase green yield due to the nutrient it incorporates. These nutrients are divided into biostimulants, as amino acids and hormones, and elemental nutrients. Amino acids are organic molecules that are ensembled together in a particular way to form proteins. Proteins are constantly being formed in the plant as part of their metabolism. Actually, the nitrogen that we supply to plants by means of fertilization is mainly used to form proteins. That's why fertilizing with amino acids provides plants with the most efficient source of nitrogen. Other than providing plants with nitrogen or sulfur, amino acids also help plants with the absorption and translocation of nutrients through a process called chelation. With the appropriate supply of amino acid, the plant will find the units to form the proteins needed for many different processes including chlorophyll formation for higher photosynthesis rate, increased resistance to drought, cold, high salinity, pathogen stress, etc. So, when we put together an increased efficiency in nutrient absorption and translocation with a higher accumulation of sugars after photosynthesis, the result is an increase in yield. As I said before, grain yield is mainly dependent on the carbohydrate deposition. The table shows the profile and concentration of amino acids in amino kel. This is a natural process which delivers amino acids in the plant preferred form. But also, we maintain the original ratio between the different amino acids. Finally, from a nutritional point of view, amino kelp is fortified with macro and micronutrients that will also help plants to form proteins and increase photosynthesis. The recovery time after stress conditions will decrease. In my next presentation, I will detail the importance of each of these nutrients for plant performance and yield. I hope you have found this presentation interesting. If you want to find more information about our products, please visit our webpage growgreenfertilizer.com. If you would like to find other presentations, 
please visit our YouTube channel. In the slide, you can find the link. Thanks for listening.